Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to another video on my channel. My name is Josh Fan of ShowMeFootball.com and ArrowheadAddict.com. And today, I felt it necessary to add on to my post game after the Chiefs Broncos game and talk about this defense or lack thereof. Coming off of that horrendous effort against the Denver Broncos defensively, the Kansas City Chiefs have the 25th ranked defense in DVOA. The pass defense is 26th in completion percentage allowed, 22nd in yards per game, 32nd in touchdowns allowed, 23rd in interceptions, 30th in passer rating, and in their last three games, they're allowing 124 rushing yards per game. Simply put, this defense is a disaster right now. It's a clown show. I mean, letting Marlon Mack, who was signed off the street for the Denver Broncos after they moved on from Melvin Gordon, ran all over this defense for a touchdown. This team couldn't stop a nosebleed against Jamar Chase and the Cincinnati Bengals. This team made Russell Wilson this team made people think that Russell Wilson still has it. This team is the only team all year to allow the Broncos to score 28 points. The Broncos are the worst offense in the league. They are the worst red zone offense in the league and they scored 28 points against the Chiefs. And after that game, I saw a lot of people saying, "Why are we complaining about a division win? Why are we complaining that the Chiefs won a game?" You know, Chiefs fans are the only fan base in the league that acts like the sky is falling after a win. Okay, all those things can be true. And what also can be true is that nobody should be accepting that performance. Nobody should be happy with that performance. And to pretend like that game was just one that fans should be happy about, I mean, you're kidding yourself. How can you not come away from that game and be concerned about this team? And I'm not asking the Chiefs to blow out every single team and get style points in all these games. But to be in a nail-biter in the fourth quarter against a horrible 3-9 and nine Broncos team? Come on. Have some freaking expectations. Because the way this team is playing right now, they're not going anywhere this winter. And if they don't, one of the biggest reasons why is the defense. Now, there's more problems on this team than just defense, but defense has obviously been a really big issue these past few weeks and really um, late into the season here. And I know I made a video last week talking about the turnovers, and the turnovers obviously haven't helped. And the Chiefs have a negative five turnover differential on the season, not only because they turn the ball over, but because their defense also doesn't create turnovers. It's a bend but don't break defense that also happens to break most of the time, and they're not forcing turnovers and giving the ball back to this Chiefs offense. They're not giving the Chiefs offense any extra possessions. So I think my stance has been made pretty clear over the last few seasons. I am not a big Steve Spagnolo guy. I don't think... He is the right defensive coordinator for this team. I understand we won a Super Bowl with him. The year we won the Super Bowl, though, we had a merely average defense because that was all we needed to win that year. And thank God we had an average defense. But if you look at the entirety of Spag's tenor, he hasn't really put a great defense on the field. And I'm starting to wonder at what point does he truly get blame for the poor defensive product? And at what point do people seriously start to question his job? And look, I get some people are going to be upset with me and they're going to say, why do you always call for Spags to be fired after every poor defensive performance? And it goes a little bit beyond that because I'm not calling for Spags to be fired just because of what happened against the Broncos or just because of what happened against the Bengals. It's the culmination of this team not being able to put a defense that's worthy of being a Super Bowl defense on the field. Because really, in 2019, when they won... That was an average defense, and they just barely won with that average defense, and that offense was one of the best offenses in league history. The 2020 defense was bad. On top of the offensive line, it was the second biggest reason they lost that Super Bowl. 2021, it was horrendous, and this year, it's still bad. And we've seen them put together good games, and they've stood up to opponents despite the fact that they're very young and they've invested a lot of youth into this defense and they brought in some new fresh faces. But even though they're very young and there's a lot of inexperience on this defense, there's also plenty of experience and veteran leadership mixed in and there's no excuse for them to be this bad and as embarrassing as they are. And it's not like they haven't invested into this defense. I mean, 
think about it. This team has undergone two complete defensive overhauls since Brett Veach has became GM. In 2018, their entire draft was spent on defense. And then in the 2019 offseason, Brett Veach brought in Frank Clark. He signed Tyron Matthew. They made a few other moves here and there. You know, he really went all out to fix this defense. That's the year they had an average defense that I was talking about when they won the Super Bowl, right? Not even two years later, that same defense was a disaster again. They tore it all down this past offseason. They brought in Justin Reed. They traded Tyreek Hill. They drafted a bunch of young guys, you know, a lot of new faces on this defense. Completely revamped defense. That is the second time they've totally revamped this defense, and it seems like it's not getting anywhere. So my point is, it's not like they haven't invested in this defense. This defense has not been neglected, okay? They're giving Spags talent. Spags can't use the excuse that these aren't his guys anymore, that this isn't his talent. He's been here for, what, four years now? Like, this is his unit, okay? And his unit is still bad. Like, they are bad. So at what point is that on him? Because at this point, it's not a lack of talent anymore. Back in 2018 and 2019, when this defense was undergoing a transition, like, you could understand there was going to be some growing pains. All we were asking was for the defense not to be Bob Sutton's defense. All we were asking Spags to do was not be Bob Sutton. And while Spags has avoided being Bob Sutton for the most part, there have been points in his tenure where this defense has been worse than anything Bob Sutton ever put on the field. For example, early 2021, they gave up the most points through five weeks in NFL history. But now we're four years in this bag's tenure. We've given them guys. They have talent. They brought in Willie Gay, Nick Bolton, Justin Reed, Joshua Williams, Jalen Watson, LeJerry Sneed. You know, I'm just naming off guys. These are all guys they've invested in. George Karloftis. He was a big Spags guy. He's the prototypical Spags DN. And that was one of the main points that I was going to make in this video is that they bring in these guys that Spags likes that they think is a scheme fit for Spags because this is what he's telling Brett Veach. And these guys that he's telling Brett Veach to bring in, they come in here and there's a lot left to be desired. I personally think Spags' defensive scheme is outdated. He plays way too much zone coverage. He drops his linemen and linebackers back into coverage way too much when they're not even good in coverage. He's terrible when it comes to matchup and personnel decisions. And his entire model is predicated off the front four being able to get pressure on their own. Yet the entire time he's been here, this front four has never been able to get pressure on their own. He keeps going off this outdated scheme that he ran in New York with the Giants when he beat Tom Brady in the Super Bowl twice where he had the long and stout guys along the defensive line, which is the type of guy he still looks for here with Frank Clark and George Karloftis, but those guys are unathletic. They're not bendy. This pass rush severely lacks speed, and Spag's prototype is just not one that's built for today's NFL. I'm tired of Brett Veach's talent acquisition being limited by the fact that we have to stay within this Spag's threshold that exists. We've brought in your guys, Spag's. You have to eventually do a good job. Like, it is comical that through the entire Mahomes era, we've been close to average one time and there's been no progression. Like, we've never even had a top 15 defense. It's not fair to Mahomes. This team is way too reliant on him, and this just isn't a defense that you can count on. And my God, the amount of third and longs that this team gives up, the amount of third and impossible situations that this team gives up, that should be fireable alone. I still can't get over that damn all-out blitz that he pulled against the Bengals last year on 3rd and 27, Charverius Ward covering Jamar Chase one-on-one. -on -one. Just stupid, stupid stuff. This defense is just way too predictable. And if I ask you the question, what does a Spags defense do well, what would your answer even be? What does a Spags defense do well? Honestly, their pass defense sometimes looks really good, and then other weeks it looks like the worst in the NFL. Their front four can't get pressure against good opponents. It's super inconsistent and has been since the day he's gotten here. The linebacker unit has probably been one of the worst position groups on the team for the majority of the time that he's been here. And I started to see some of the red flags with Spag's defense when, um, you know, he brought in a lot of free agents since he's been here. The team has brought in a lot of free agents. Frank Clark, Justin Reed, uh, Jerron Reed, uh, Kendall Fuller is another one. Though he was acquired through trade, he is brought here at the same time as Spags. You know, a lot of these guys have come to the Chiefs, and they've regressed. They've gotten way worse playing under Steve Spagnolo. 
And as far as young guys, rookies that they brought in and attempted to develop, who out of the rookies that have been here or the rookies that have been drafted since Spags has been here would you say are legitimate franchise cornerstones on defense? And by franchise cornerstone, I mean like a Chris Jones type of player that deserves a huge contract extension that's like, you know what, this guy is a star and we cannot afford to let him go. Is there one? Maybe LeJarius Sneed pushes that a little bit. Maybe Willie Gay. Willie Gay has shown flashes, but I don't think he's really played enough or been consistent enough to warrant that. I think Spaggs is a coordinator that the game has passed him by a little bit, similar to how I talked about Dave Tobe and um, his special teams unit. But, you know, I think the same kind of goes for Spaggs because – Really, he puts his guys in terrible matchups. It seems like he doesn't even know his own personnel. He tries to fit square pegs and round holes way too often. I just don't get it, man. I, I don't I don't like what he brings to the table. And if this defense doesn't get fixed or the Chiefs have an ugly exit from the postseason, mostly because of the defense, I think he's seriously got to think about replacing him. With the amount that the Chiefs have invested into this defense and how long Spags has been here, there's no excuse for them to still be that bad. I think you could find someone better that could come in here and better utilize the pieces that you've brought in. At this point, either Spags just isn't a very good coach, Brett Veach isn't a very good GM, or a little bit of both. I tend to think it's a lot of Spags and the coaching staff makes the shopping list and Brett Veach does the shopping, which is how we end up with guys like George Karloftis. And I'm not saying George Karloftis is a bad player, but he's an example of someone that is like totally a Spags guy. Like Spags definitely was pulling strings when they drafted George Karloftis. And though George Karloftis is a good player, I think he has a limited ceiling. He's not very athletic. He's not very bendy. And I think he's not what the Chiefs pass rush needed. I think they needed bend. I think they needed speed. That's something that they've lacked. That's something that they gained a little bit of when they traded for Melvin Ingram. But when they traded for Melvin Ingram, he was 32 years old, and he was your most athletic edge, which just shows how unathletic you were at the position. I just don't know how much more I can take of watching this pathetic defense before I really have to go on a rant and say, you know what, fire Spags. There's definitely been times where I've said fire Spags in the past, and I don't think it was necessarily unwarranted. I mean, this defense was horrible, especially last year, early last year. They were horrible, and I think the talk about potentially replacing Spags was totally justified. And if this defensive performance keeps up, I think it's totally justified. I mean, usually Spags' defense is the way they work is they get better as the season goes on. That hasn't been the case this year. They've gotten much, much worse as the season has gone on. And we know Spags runs a complicated defense, an outdated one too, but a complicated one. And usually the guy is it just takes them a while to learn it. At this point, they should know it. You shouldn't have guys that are still running around that don't know where to be lined up and a bunch of miscommunication, but that's what we have. That's where we're at. And at some point, that's on the coordinator. That's on the coaching. How do your guys not know your defense still? So, yeah, um, those are my thoughts. Um, I definitely want to hear from you guys. Do you think Spags' seat is getting warm? Do you think he can fix this Chiefs defense? Let me know in the comments. But all that being said, make sure you like, share, and subscribe so more Chiefs fans can find this. And I'll see you all in the next one. Go Chiefs!